What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the second installment of You Ask, I Answer. Uh, before we jump into questions, I just want to briefly, as usual, plug my Discord channel. The Discord channel is a place where you can chat about many body physics, statistical mechanics, uh, your graduate school career, or general experiences in academia. If that sounds interesting, uh, check the link in the description. Let's jump straight into some questions. First question, how is the von Neumann entropy uh, for a quantum system related to the classical notion of entropy? in statistical mechanics. So in our context, the answer uh, to this question is quite simple. Uh, let's start by reviewing the definition of entropy that we use in classical statistical mechanics. So for this, we can assume we will have some discrete set of states uh, that I will label with the index K. And to each microstate, we're going to assign a probability P subscript K. For intuition, you might think of, say, a spin chain where the states on each lattice site can be either up or down. So a microstate is just a collection of up and down spins. Each of these microstates will have a corresponding energy E subscript K. The Gibbs entropy that we use in statistical mechanics is just the Shannon entropy with an appropriate physical constant. I always take the uh, Boltzmann constant to be one, however, uh, so we don't have to carry it around, and we'll do that for this video as well. The equilibrium ensembles we use um, in statistical mechanics are the ensembles that maximize this entropy, given some constraint. So for example, you can have the canonical ensemble, where beta is the inverse temperature. Plugging this ensemble into our definition of entropy gives us back this equation. We might also have the microcanonical ensemble, which tells us that each microstate uh, that is energetically accessible is equal probable. So capital omega here is just the total number of energetically accessible microstates. Typing this probability distribution into the Gibbs entropy gives you back the usual Boltzmann entropy. Okay, so now let's go and review the von Neumann entropy. We write the von Neumann entropy as the following expression, where rho is any density matrix. The interesting thing about the von Neumann entropy is that if you diagonalize uh, the density matrix, it reduces the expression to that of the Shannon entropy or the Gibbs entropy. So let rho uh, equal v times lambda times v dagger, where v is a unitary matrix uh, that diagonalizes the density matrix, and lambda is a uh, diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues of rho on the diagonal. Then the von Neumann entropy reduces to the following expression. Here the lambda k's are actually just probabilities, and they all sum to 1. So right away you can see that these two expressions are actually equivalent underneath the hood. So for example, uh, the Gibbs state or the canonical ensemble can be written in the following way for a quantum mechanical system or for a density matrix. If we were to example, uh, write the energy eigenvalues and the energy eigenkets for the Hamiltonian, uh, like the following notation, um, then we can re-express the Gibbs state um, as the following uh, expression. This expression uh, that we get here for rho beta um, is already diagonal in the energy eigenbasis. So we don't have to diagonalize the density matrix. And we see that the probabilities uh, that we get are the following expressions that are identical to the classical statistical mechanics case. So in terms of statistical mechanics and in terms of the ensembles, the von Neumann entropy and the Gibbs entropy are the same. So let's move on to our second question. The second question is, uh, do you uh, work in Fortran at all? Um, as I have heard a lot of work uh, is present in it. So I don't personally use Fortran at all. Uh, I think the big difference between uh, people who use Fortran uh, versus C++ basically boils down to uh, what their group used when they started out in numerical computing and what is popular in their field. Fortran in my field uh, seems to be sort of on the decline. Most young researchers I know uh, code in C++. Um, and a lot of tools uh, seem to be developed in C++. If the tools are not developed in C++, they're usually in more modern languages like Python and Julia. But Fortran is definitely uh, still used. It's a good option for a very large class of problems, of course. 
In my undergraduate degree, I was exposed to scientific computing in a number of classes um, in the languages of C++, MATLAB, uh, Mathematica, Maple, and Python. Unfortunately, no one ever taught me or got me started uh, with Fortran. I then joined a group uh, for my master's degree, my PhD, who worked in uh, C++ primarily. So that was sort of set in stone uh, by my education and connections. And uh, I mean, if you really think about it, I didn't have much choice but to choose C++ um, as my primary language. Okay, next up, the third question. Could you explain why when you define the partition function in quantum statistical mechanics, you are saying that the wave function is not something physical? So I definitely see the subtle detail there uh, that is definitely really important, and I'll answer it for the classical and quantum case. If you haven't already, I'd recommend uh, watching my principle of maximum entropy video to give a longer explanation for what I'm about to lay out here. Uh, but the short version uh, is the following. Uh, when we do these calculations in statistical mechanics, uh, we assign probabilities uh, to our microstates. The way we do this has to be consistent with the macroscopic information um, of the state uh, of our system, or more precisely, the macroscopic information about the system that we are modeling. So that would be things like energy or number of particles in the system, or perhaps the volume of the system. Whatever modeling we do, no matter what, has to be consistent with this macroscopic information. The conjecture of statistical mechanics and what we indeed find in a lot of uh, cases is that this macroscopic information is all we really need uh, to know to make accurate predictions about other macroscopic properties of the system. But it's important to note that the probabilities that we assign aren't physical. They don't actually describe what this system is doing from a microscopic perspective. But what they do do is they give us a way to make macroscopic predictions about the system uh, given some constraints. Okay, so let's do the fourth question. Uh, could you please talk a bit about your PhD thesis topic? So this question uh, comes from the Discord channel. Um, the title of my PhD thesis uh, was slash is statistical mechanics from unitary dynamics. So putting unitary dynamics in this title basically isolates the problem to closed and isolated quantum systems. So they evolve completely under unitary dynamics or in particular solutions of the Schrodinger equation. The introduction is more or less uh, basically what this channel is. I derive statistical mechanics from scratch using modern arguments. First, establishing that static equilibrium exists in our context. Then I derive the ensembles of statistical mechanics from Jane's principle. So of course, I specifically chose an epistemic interpretation of statistical mechanics. And then after that, in the introduction, I introduced the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis and its consequences. So I did what's called a sandwich thesis, which means that the next three chapters were just contributed articles um, that are all three currently in the publication process. The first article was a study connecting sufficiently well-behaved dynamics to easier to study uh, correlation functions. It turns out that sometimes you can relate pure state dynamics uh, to, for example, linear response theory. It's not clear yet how broad this observation is though. The second was on recurrence times and equilibration. Uh, the talk that I uploaded to the channel uh, recently is about this article. Uh, we basically derived a lower bound on the recurrence time. And the third article is on quantum chaos and scrambling, where we studied out of time ordered correlators and compared some properties of free and chaotic models. So that's it for this round of answers. If you want your question answered, feel free to ask me a question on Discord, on any number of my YouTube videos, of course. And uh, with that, I hope you liked the video. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.